Peter, thanks very much. Um, uh, I'm going to start with um, trying to go through things. Uh, there's a lot to go through. Um, lovely to see everybody here. Uh, it's a busy day, as Peter said. Um, about 12 minutes per talk, a couple of minutes handing over. There may be opportunity for one uh, question in between times, but we're trying to get through quite a lot of information. The talks are going to be taped. Um, uh, so if you're asking questions, um, well, ask a sensible question, I guess, as you normally would. Um, <laughs> I'm telling you, the talks are going to be taped. Um, I'm going to start with my groom bit, saying thank you to an enormous amount of people. Um, Peter's been very kind about me, but this is uh, a project that involves uh, the whole country of anaesthetists, um, four countries of anaesthetists. Um, uh, there'll be several, probably many of you, who are, have been local reporters uh, for this project. The project simply would not have happened without the local reporters in every hospital. Um, uh, we're very, very grateful for the work that you've done and indeed for all the people who have reported cases. NAP3, it was difficult for people to report cases. NAP4, I think when a patient had had a problem at the end of your laryngoscope or, or your laryngeal mask, uh, even more difficult to report cases, we are very grateful. Uh, the reviewers I'll come to later, immensely grateful, but I must mention uh, Nick Woodall and Chris Froek. Uh, so if I'm the groom, uh, I'm not sure which one of them I'm marrying. Um, no, which is the bridesmaid, but um, I'm very grateful for the enormous amount of work that they've done. Uh, been, um, we've worked very much as a team. Uh, I'm grateful for two uh, college presidents uh, and several members of council who have been incredibly helpful with this, and some in inspirational um, characters. You can read their own names, uh, some of whom are here uh, from DAS, uh, that have put, strangely for an to have actually put the airway on the map, which in a way has actually needed to be done. Uh, the organisations below that have been uh, key partners, and I'm not going to read them all, you can read them yourself, uh, but important partners showing the widespread interest and involvement in this, in this project. As previously already alluded to, the Chief Medical Officer has either endorsed or supported uh, this project. I think there's a subtle difference, I'm not sure what it is, um, but we, were, we, are, I, I, we are very grateful for their support and that of the defence organisations. The whole process was put through the Department of Health uh, Patient Information Advisory Group to ensure that it was robust and appropriate. <coughs> Finally, I'd like to thank uh, uh, the team at the college who have done an enormous amount of unseen work. Uh, Charlie McLaughlin, um, uh, Director of Professional uh, Standards, has been uh, an immense uh, personal uh, support to me uh, while we've been doing this. Uh, Mandy, Edwina and Phil who put together the report that I've only seen for the first time today and Bob Williams also very supportive. There's a person missing off that list. She'll be immensely embarrassed <laughs> that I've uh, put her up. But Shirani has been, uh, the, in many ways, the lead for this report. She has done all the organisation at the college. Every email that's come to me has come to her. Um, she has been fantastic in her efficiency um, and charm and doing the job just extremely well. I just remembered it was being recorded and changed that to extremely well. <laughs> Why bother? I take the view that managing the airway is what defines us as anaesthetists. As Mike Rosen said, uh, there's one skill above all else that an anaesthetist is expected to ex exhibit and that is to maintain the airway impeccably. Uh, Jonathan Benimoff, the most compelling educational effort for, for the anaesthesia community should be to reduce the frequency and severity of complications related to managing the airway. And I hope that that's what the project is about. We all know what complications can happen to the airway, and to a certain extent there's nothing new in that for, so you could go home now, because there are no new complications, there's nothing amazingly new, but it does give us some numbers. It does allow us to speak in the way that uh, Lord Kelvin said that we should speak, with some knowledge and some numbers. Uh, just briefly to touch on uh, the relevance of airway problems in the UK, uh, we looked at uh, litigation events in anaesthesia uh, over the last, well, over a 12-year period recently. Um, we're a low-risk specialty, and that is something that we should remember. But if we categorise those uh, 841 uh, uh, litigation cases, not airway complications, but, but litigation cases, uh, we see that airway is only fifth in the number of cases, third in the, number of, in, the, in, the, in the total cost, 
and second in the cost per case and the frequency of, of uh, highly adverse outcomes. So severity in the last column you can see 72% of those litigation cases related to either to an airway death or brain damage. Markedly different from everything apart from central lines. Look at regional anaesthesia that we worry a great deal about, that's 6%. So it's a big deal. And when we looked at uh, airway cases in particular, uh, these 12% of cases in litigation accounted for 53% of deaths in the data set and 10 of the most 50 uh, expensive claims. Expense relating in part to whether the job was done well and the degree of harm on the patient. But we're not talking about litigation and cases that come to litigation may be a different group from those that, come, that are complications. Martin Bromley's wife, Elaine, her death never came to litigation. Martin took this in a very different direction and, and I believe he should be on my, as it were, my, my wedding list. He's um, uh, an inspiration and I don't think that fall would have happened uh, without his uh, monumental um, uh, response to his wife's death in a very constructive manner. Now follows a series, and I'll go through very quickly, of press cuttings from deaths that occurred in the year, uh, in, the, in the UK and Ireland, in the year up until um, while well, NAP4 was being set up. A case of fatal laryngospasm in Ireland. Uh, a fatal, um, I think this was an aspiration or displacement um, in a dental case with an LMA. Uh, fatal tracheal injury at intubation. Obstetric death failed intubation, serious failures by doctors, that's how it always gets reported. Blunders is a, number, a word that's usually there. There's a feedback from the population. This was an anaesthetist error, medical incompetence, basic care of anaesthetics. Doctors starved her of oxygen. And there may be some adverse uh, comments about the report today. Um, we shall see devastating mistakes. Peter now knows that anaesthetist had made three bungled attempts to put a tube into his wife's airway. I don't suppose they were bungled attempts. Fatal post-operative laryngospasm, aspiration and recovery. Injured Trevelyan, child who died after a tracheostomy was displaced. Uh, tracheostomy had been inserted um, when India came in with croup. Um, and uh, shortly after being placed, it was displaced and could not be replaced. There was much adverse comment about that to other cases, more cases. And this is the case of Gordon Ewing uh, from Scotland. Failed intubation, bilateral pneumothoraces after an airway exchange catheter was inserted and um, ventilation was problematic through it. He was a, a large man. Um, many of these cases will have echoes as we go through the day. He was a large man um, uh, having an operation on his little finger. Problems in ITU. Death at percutaneous dilatational tracheostomy, blockage of a tracheostomy, attempt to ventilate a man with a, with a laryngectomy from the upper airway, and another ITU block tube. I'm going to finish with two quotes, and I think actually they say the same thing. One's from quite a while away, quite a, quite a while ago, Aristotle, and it's really about making sure that we do simple things well, and by practicing simple things and getting them right, we become experts. Excellence is an art won by training and habituation. We do not act rightly because we have virtue or excellence, but we rather have those because we have acted rightly. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is an act, is not an act, but a habit. The British cycling team, um, who have had massive success in the Olympics and um, are expected to have massive success in the next Olympics, their director says that the way they improve their performance is not by revolution, but by tiny changes, uh, iterative tiny changes improvement in all sorts of facets, whether it be the design of the suit, the design of the bike, the nutrition, etc., etc. And that's how things get better. So the up-to-date version of what Aristotle says from Atul Gawande, progress in medicine will not be made through improved technology, but rather through improved application of current knowledge and activity. In short, doing it better. And I think that's what NAP4 is about. Thanks very much.